The purpose of this recording is to summarise some key points we'll be making about the law of piracy in our international criminal law class. So when we talk about piracy, um, in class we'll cover uh, issues to do with its background and origins, the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, interaction with terrorism suppression conventions, relevant UN Security Council resolutions, and you can see there's quite a chain of them, and various measures of international cooperation, and we'll also discuss uh, the options for addressing it that are currently being considered. But what I want to draw basic attention to here is the definition of piracy under the UN Law of the Sea Convention. Um, so when we look to the Law of the Sea Convention, we find that there is a duty to cooperate to suppress piracy. We find a definition of piracy. Uh, that piracy definition has its limitations, and we'll look at powers of suppression and prosecution, and then make a few brief points about how that compares with the terrorism suppression treaties we've looked at in other classes. So first off, uh, under international law, states have a duty to cooperate to suppress piracy. Um, we find this in Article 100 of UNCLOS. All states shall cooperate to the fullest possible extent in the repression of piracy on the high seas or in any other place outside the jurisdiction of any state. Um, but importantly, the International Law Commission said of that wording in 1956 uh, that states have a latitude as to the measures they might take. So, in other words, the duty to cooperate in suppression does not mean an absolute duty to prosecute. Further, there's not even a requirement that states have an adequate national law that would allow them to conduct piracy prosecutions. So what then is piracy? Well, uh, the definition is found in Article 101 of UNCLOS, and I won't go through that in enormous detail. It's also supplemented by Article 103, uh, but what it boils down to is this. Piracy is an act of violence, detention, or depredation, um, depredation essentially being theft, for private ends, on, committed on the high seas and against another ship or persons or property on board. Uh, the definition includes various uh, ancillary offences such as inciting, intentionally facilitating, and voluntary participation in a pirate craft with knowledge of the facts making it a pirate craft. So it is in fact uh, a, an in a crime to go prepared to commit piracy, or as I have it here, cruising with intent to commit piracy. So act of violence for private ends on the high seas and by one ship one private craft against another ship or persons or property on board. Now there are limitations to that definition. Um, the key one being geography. Uh, the offence has to occur on the high seas and enforcement action is limited to the high seas. It requires two vessels, so internal seizure of a craft, mutiny, is not piracy. And there's a debate to be had about what private ends means and whether the private ends requirement means politically motivated violence can't be piracy, but we'll look to that in class. Um, the other point then is to consider suppression and prosecution. The essential points uh, are found in two provisions of the Law of the Sea Convention. First, under Article 110, there is a right in government warships to visit and search vessels on suspicion that they are involved in piracy. And under Article 105, every state has jurisdiction on the high seas to arrest a pirate ship or aircraft and arrest the persons and seize property on board. And we then have this provision, the courts of the state which carried out the seizure may decide on the penalties to be imposed. So this is an acknowledgement of universal jurisdiction, but the Law of the Sea Convention only expressly contemplates the capturing warship taking jurisdiction. So that is supplemented by customary international law, where we've seen in our jurisdiction seminar, there's universal jurisdiction to prosecute pirates subsequently found within state territory, and also states might transfer piracy suspects between um, equally competent jurisdictions. So to sum up, there's a duty to cooperate to the fullest possible extent and a discretion to arrest and prosecute, or a duty to suppress, but a discretion as to whether you prosecute. And many states don't have an adequate national law enabling prosecution. Now can the terrorism suppression conventions plug part of the gap? Well, the, the thought I'll leave you with that we'll explore more in class is to compare uh, the piracy provisions with um, terrorism extradite or prosecute obligations. And here's a brief summary of the differences that you might care to look at uh, after this presentation's concluded.